Hey everybody. So this is the first full adder with the new design. It's just a hair taller than me and I'm about 6'2", so it's a pretty big machine. These are the remnants of the older machines from high school. I still have the original one upstairs, but um, you know these obviously were much taller, but I've scrapped these for parts. We have a pile of AND gates sitting back here and some transistors back there. Here are two samples. This is a simple transistor. So the switch, obviously, as you can see, is going back and forth between two outputs, kind of like a demultiplexer. And this right here is an AND gate, which, as you can see, has two inputs. And when they're both on, they complete the powertrain all the way through. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a bit confusing at first, but it kind of all comes together. Um, so in this one particular machine, we have 11 of those AND gates. One of them is actually extraneous, but uh, as you can see, this design is uh, pretty compact. So it'd be a real pain to get that out of there. So I just kind of tied one of the inputs high and left it as it is. I've also got 11 motors in there, four right there on the left. And moving down, you can see a few of them. They're those big gray cylinders. We've got another one right there hiding on the side. And as you can see, there are no electronic components in this computer. Everything is fully mechanically powered, except of course these surge protectors, which are feeding the electricity into those motors. Um, when we flip those surge protectors on in a couple seconds, uh, not, the computer isn't actually going to start its calculations uh, from the electricity alone. What's going to happen is these motors will start turning, and these relays are what actually start the calculations. So um, we'll see that in a second. but. First we'll come around here to the front panel and I'll show you something. Um, we've got several of those transistors I showed you over there a second ago. Here are a couple right here. Um, and I've already taken the liberty ahead of time of resetting all of these individual switches. What's actually going to happen in the final product, hopefully, is that when this gets integrated into a full processor and the uh, full simple computer eventually, Everything on this front panel and, of course, in the back is going to be controlled by the computer itself. That's why I haven't, uh, you know, wasted too much time in making this all that user-friendly. So the output isn't going to be as simple as, you know, a dial that you can just read out the number from. It's actually going to be, uh, you know, some gears turning. And I just know from building this which ones mean what. For instance, the carry out bit is actually this gear turning right here. And this gear, of course, is going to come out of this full adder, and it's going to link up to the next full adder to the left of it. Likewise, the sum output of this full adder is actually this gear right here. And it's not the sum either, it's the inverse of the sum, which uh, was just kind of an, an interesting uh, side effect of the design process, I guess. So anyway, uh, we'll fire this thing up. I'll start turning on these surge protectors. Got one right there. And another one here. And so now, of course, you can hear those motors cranking, and it's going to get a lot louder when I start flipping the relays on. But we'll come around here to the front first, and we'll put in our calculation. I've decided we're just going to do a simple one. We'll do 1 minus 1 for our first calculation. So this is the transistor that signifies addition or subtraction. So we'll put it on subtract right here. And then this is actually the uh, bottom number in the calculation. So if it were x minus y, this is the y transistor. So I'll flip this to 1, since we're doing 1 minus 1. I'll come all the way down here to the bottom, and this is our top number. So I'll flip this to 1. These two transistors are actually inverted, which was uh, a decision I made to make it a bit simpler in design. And then this is the carry input. So we'll flip that to 1 to match our subtraction up here. So we've got our transistor set, and like I said, I've already reset all of the other necessary switches and relays and things like that ahead of time. So we'll come around here, and this is where we are actually activating the computer with all these individual relays, which I'll point out. Um, again, in the final computer, everything is going to be controlled automatically, which is a relatively simple addition. Um, I'm just making a few design changes in the reset system right now. So we'll start flipping these relays on, and as you can see when I turn this on, it completes that powertrain. Showing you again, off, these output gears are stationary. When I turn it on, they start cranking. I'll do the same up here, crank that one on. Come down here, that relay's on, that relay's on, we just go all the way up. This is the loudest one right here because we have four motors in sync turning this at very high speeds. So you can see that really cranking fast now. Now if we come around here, what's happening is 
this output gear is routing this power up here. It's coming around to the front, up through here, and it's splitting between these two transistors that we set ahead of time. These transistors now are routing the power through their outputs to the middle of the computer where these little paddles are turning. These paddles are controlling the inputs of the AND gates in the back of the computer, which go all the way up the back of the computer, as you can see. We've got the same thing going on up here for the top two transistors. We have the power coming from our relay. It's coming through here. Gets split between the two transistors along the top. It's going through the outputs of the transistors, and it's turning these paddles, which are controlling the inputs of the AND gates. We can see already we have a couple of the AND gates which have their circuits completed and it's a little hard to catch on camera, but this one in particular has its two inputs set to high, so we're getting a high output. If we go down here, we should be able to see one. Yeah, I can see it right here. See, these two inputs have been flipped high, which actually is kind of flipped down to complete the circuit, and we have this output gear turning as a result. So right now what's happening? is the top set of ANDs and the bottom set of ANDs have been set by their corresponding transistors and the power that is coming out of those ANDs is being fed down through the middle of the computer and it's going through these systems right here. These paddles are connected to the outputs of those ANDs and they're flipping these intermediate transistors accordingly. And if you look really closely, it's a bit hard to catch on camera, but you can see these paddles turning very slowly right here if you just keep your eye on it. So again, a, a very slow system right now, but it's highly dependent on motor speed. The system can be sped up very easily by just increasing the motor speed. Now what's happening in the meantime, as these inputs are being set, is the power is being routed to this other relay which is connected to a motor. Once these inputs have been set, and they have now, this paddle is going to start turning, albeit very slowly. And it's, again, it's a bit hard to catch on camera, but once that paddle turns completely, it's going to flip that little, um, this little rod right here. And when that rod gets flipped, it's going to turn this relay like that. So once that relay gets turned, again, the power gets fed up through here, gets split to the two transistors, and those transistors, depending upon how their inputs are set, are going to route that power to the corresponding AND gates, and those AND gates are going to control the result of our calculation. So right now it's pretty much just a waiting game depending upon uh, you know how long it takes this particular relay to get set and typically it's no longer than a minute. Um, just for the sake of speeding up the process, I'm, I'm seeing this turning right here so I'm just going to help it along and turn it a little bit more so it doesn't take too long. So now we can see the power getting fed up through here. The two transistors here are now turning their gears accordingly. So we'll come around here and see the transistors are feeding their power to these appropriate paddles. We've got another paddle up here that's turning. And so now it's just a matter of waiting for these AND gates to get completed. And we can see this one already has been completed and there should be another one down here that's been completed. And it's just a matter of reading the output. So if we come over here, we see this gear about every second turning. This gear, like I said at the beginning of the video, is our carry out gear. So we'll see it turning in a second. Just a moment. There it goes. So when that gear turns, it's going to feed out to the next full adder. And when it gets to the next full adder, it's going to be controlling this carry input that we set at the beginning by hand. Likewise, in the back, we have a, an S prime out gear. So S prime is just signifying, like I said at the beginning of the video, the opposite of the sum. So since we did 1 minus 1, the sum is going to be 0. But because it's the opposite of 0, it's actually going to be 1. So we should expect to see on this S prime gear, which is right here, a turning gear. And if you look very closely, you can see that that gear is in fact turning. So that's about how... <laughs> Uh, simple it is. It's just, like I said, a matter of waiting because um, these motor speeds are not too fast and the motors themselves aren't that strong, so uh, there's a lot of gearing down that is necessary to power the hundreds of gears that are contained within this machine.